can Starship still launch by the end of this month? Despite a series of setbacks, the momentum behind SpaceX's Starship program doesn't seem to be slowing down. Even the recent explosion hasn't appeared to dampen the rapid pace of work at Starbase, where signs point to steady progress toward the next test flight. So, could we see this massive spacecraft soar into the sky again soon? Let's take a closer look. For those who've been living under a rock, SpaceX has destroyed Massey with the static fire of Ship 36. With the damage at the site, the capability to test a ship there has been knocked out of action for quite a while. And of course, this delays the date of Flight 10. But as I said, they don't want to slow down the launch cadence. The idea now is to use the orbital launch mount at Pad 1 to static fire the remaining Block 2 ships. Static firing a ship here might sound like a bizarre idea, but with some modifications, it could work. First off, the clamp systems on ships and boosters are not the same, which means an adapter is needed between the ship and the OLM clamps. The adapter they're working on is a repurposed ship transport stand, now positioned right beside the orbital launch mount. As of early July 2025, modifications to this transport stand are underway. Grinding, cutting, and welding have been observed as they work to convert it into a static fire adapter for Pad A. The top section is already functioning as intended, equipped with six clamps designed to secure a Starship. Since it was originally built to transport Starship upper stages, the most intriguing part is what's happening at the base. This stand serves two key purposes. First, it provides clearance from the orbital launch mount, ensuring the aft flaps on Starship don't come into contact with any part of the mount. Second, it functions as an adapter, connecting securely to the robust orbital launch mount itself. As for protecting the launch mount, SpaceX is actively repairing and preparing it for the upcoming test campaign. A close inspection reveals just how much wear and tear this mount has endured over time. After all, it's been in use since before Starship Flight 1. It weathered that intense destructive debut launch, along with eight subsequent launches, numerous static fires, and more. The bigger question is how SpaceX plans to load the ship for a static fire when it's mounted on Pad 1. The quick disconnect QD system that supplies all the commodities to a ship is obviously very different from that of a booster. After all, the volume and pressure requirements for their respective tanks are quite different. To make this work, the teams will likely need to develop a temporary interface to connect the ship's propellant lines for liquid methane and liquid oxygen, as well as its electrical systems, to the OLM's infrastructure. This could involve custom fittings or rerouting lines to match the ship's requirements. Alternatively, if SpaceX is feeling crazy enough, they could use the chopsticks to lift the ship for fueling via the actual ship QD, then lower it onto the stand for the static fire. That would mean the ship would be suspended by the chopsticks with nothing underneath while being filled, and then gently set down for the test. As wild as that sounds, the chopstick system is technically qualified for such a task. On January 12, 2022, SpaceX conducted a load test of the launch tower's catch arms using water bags to simulate the combined weight of a fully stacked super heavy booster and Starship. While exact figures vary, most reports estimate the load was in the range of 500 metric tons. Some sources suggest the six water bags, if fully filled, could have weighed between 120 and 300 tons, with speculation that the total weight supported by the arms was around 300 to 400 tons. This is at least 50% more than the dry mass of a booster, which shows just how strong the system really is. Honestly, it's still too soon to tell how SpaceX plans to modify the launch pad, but the two key factors are that it needs to be robust enough to handle a static fire test, and simple enough to avoid taking too much time. After all, only two Block 2 static fires remain before Massey is rebuilt for the Starship version 3. Who knows, maybe they could even be done by the end of this month and ready for Flight 10 by then. We'll keep paying close attention to what's happening at Starbase so we can keep you updated. The most straightforward confirmation would likely come from a tweet by Elon Musk, although he's been a bit preoccupied with politics again lately, because Ship 36 has now become a pile of scrap metal. 
Ship 37 is likely the prototype that will fly in Starship Flight Test 10. It was first spotted on November 8, 2024, with its LOX header tank inside the Star Factory. Stacking for Ship 37 began on February 26, 2025, and it was rolled into MB2 for further stacking on March 15, 2025. Final stacking was completed on April 15, 2025, bringing the total duration of the stacking process to 48 days. On April 22, 2025, Ship 37 was lifted off the MB2 stacking turntable and moved onto the center back work stand. Ship 37 rolled out to the Massey Outpost for cryogenic proof testing on May 29, 2025, where it completed a full cryogenic test of both tanks on May 30th. It returned to MB2 on June 4th. Recently, several Raptor engines, including both sea level and vacuum variants, were spotted at the build site before being moved into Mega Bay 2, MB2. The appearance of engines designated for Ship 37 is a very promising sign, indicating that preparations for Starship's 10th flight are actively underway. The prototype currently lacks all of its flaps and most of its heat shield, but that won't take very long to complete. It should be ready by the time modifications at Pad A are finished for a static fire test. This time, let's hope it doesn't end up like Ship 36. As for the Super Heavy Booster, B-16's stacking was completed on December 26, 2024, after 71 days. It was then lifted onto the thrust simulator stand on February 27, 2025, and rolled out to the Massey Outpost the following day, February 28. There, it completed three cryogenic tests before rolling back between March 20 and 21st. On June 4, B-16 was rolled out to the launch site, where it attempted a static fire on June 5th, but aborted. It then successfully completed a full static fire on June 6th. SpaceX is testing this booster very thoroughly because according to Shauna Diaz, director of Starship Engineering at SpaceX, they plan to attempt a catch of B-16 for this flight. Wait, why is that special? Doesn't SpaceX catch super heavy boosters all the time? Well, yes, but this time it's going to be a little different. During Starship Flight 9, the Super Heavy Booster executed a much more controlled flip maneuver than in previous launches. After stage separation, the booster remained upright and quickly turned back toward the launch site. Out of all the maneuvers we've seen in earlier flights, this was the most precise. SpaceX emphasized that this flight path is the most efficient and is designed to minimize propellant usage. To achieve this level of control, SpaceX made a key modification by intentionally blocking part of the hot stage ring so the thrust from Starship's upper stage engines pushed against that blocked portion of the hot stage ring and controlled the booster during stage separation. In past flights, this process was more chaotic and less predictable. After separation, Booster 14, B-14, successfully relit all 13 of its center engines. However, one engine shut down almost immediately, followed shortly by a complete loss of telemetry. Webcast footage showed a fireball just before data was lost. To be fair, this was the first time SpaceX reused a super heavy booster. The goal was to collect performance data under suboptimal conditions to inform improvements for future vehicles. Despite the intense conditions, B-14 held together through most of its descent until the final landing burn. Looking ahead to Flight 10, SpaceX plans to catch the booster which would be a major milestone while still performing the same efficient flip maneuver. To do that safely, they must ensure the booster doesn't explode or, worse, collide with the launch tower. This makes refining control during separation and descent more critical than ever. After Flight 6, Elon Musk stated that Flight 8 could be the first attempt to catch the ship, provided Flight 7's landing was successful. However, due to the failure of Ship 33 to complete its ascent burn, the catch attempt was pushed to a later mission, along with the likely requirement for an insertion burn into low Earth orbit. Before Flight 8, there was hope that Flight 9 would be the one to feature the first ship catch attempt. FCC permits for Flight 9 even included language allowing for that possibility. Unfortunately, 
Flight 8 also failed during the ascent burn, pushing the timeline back once again. On the bright side, SpaceX continues to make progress. After each setback, they haven't encountered the same issue twice. During Flight 9, the ship survived longer than any previous Block 2 vehicle, showing that real improvement is happening. So, at least the program is moving in the right direction. How far do you think Starship can go in Flight 10? Who knows? Maybe it could even complete the mission and achieve a soft landing. Comment all the way. If you're rooting for that like I am, if Ship 37 manages to go the distance, there's a real chance SpaceX could attempt the first ship catch with Ship 38. That would be the perfect way to wrap up the Block 2 phase of Starship's development. SpaceX has plenty left to tackle. They're still working on solving the COPV, Composite Overwrapped Pressure Vessel issue, ensuring the Block 2 Starship doesn't suffer from fuel leaks, and at the same time, preparing the Block 3 vehicle for its first flight later this year. Space is hard. There's no way around it. A lot can go wrong when launching a spacecraft, and every successful program has faced its fair share of failures along the way. What sets SpaceX apart is how publicly they embrace those failures. Their approach is bold and unconventional. They build, fly, and often blow things up to learn faster. It's a risky strategy, but it's one that has already paid off. Just look at the success of the Falcon 9, which has had around 500 successful launches, only two in-flight failures, one partial failure, and one pre-flight destruction. As long as Elon Musk is willing to fund this rapid iteration process, there's a good chance it'll work for Starship, too. If you've made it this far, I truly appreciate your time and interest. I'm glad to know this video has been helpful to you. We're on our way to reaching our goal of 10,000 subscribers, so feel free to support us by hitting the subscribe button. It really makes a big difference. Thank you.